physical security is still um, pretty much at the outside boundary of your property. Um, but we're talking about uh, some of the uh, more technical aspects um, with regard to uh, physical security here. Uh, starting with outside lighting. Um, have you got uh, uh, lighting to uh, deal with the issues you need to deal with? Um, you know, appropriate to the circumstances, once again. Uh, but there's all kinds, you know, it's not just lights. Uh, there are different kinds. We'll go into that in a few minutes. Um, having uh, some kind of intrusion detection. Uh, physical intrusion detection. Detecting physical intrusions. Having sensors uh, to do this. Um, that can be problematic depending on the type of sensors for non-adversarial intrusions. For example, raccoons. Um, you know, uh, are you detecting warmth? Um, are you detecting size? Are you detecting weight? Are you detecting movement? Um, and, and, you know, what does that tell you? Again, a balance between what you need in terms of uh, the detection and, and uh, how important physical intrusion is uh, in your situation and the um, false positives uh, that uh, any given uh, uh, sensor situation can uh, generate. So, uh, now, um, closed circuit TV. Um, this is uh, more complex than uh, many people think. You know, you just buy a camera. Well, what type of camera? Uh, what resolution? What um, uh, you know, are you doing color? Are you doing infrared uh, to see in the dark, to uh, have, um, you know, heat signatures detected? Um, interestingly, um, well, you know, we'll maybe get into uh, alarm systems. Um, but uh, just to, to point out, every, every type of alarm system has a... Uh, a sensor component, um, a command control or communications component, and a um, an actuator. And of course, in this case, the the camera is the sensor. Um, the uh, cabling or or wireless network, if you use it that way, um, is the communication system. And the the actuator is. Uh, you know, either a monitor that people are watching or a recorder uh, that is um, recording what's going on. Uh, hopefully for review later. Um, do you have a patrol force? Do you have security guards? And uh, again, with regard to, you know, I mentioned uh, in regard to SEPTED, uh, if you have a separate security guard force that, you know, you contract this, and many people do. Um, I mean, it's a complex endeavor and licensing and so on and so forth. Um, but if they are not your employees, uh, you know, you don't have that territoriality uh, issue. You know, are they really working for you? Um, so... Uh, as I say, the, the lighting types, we've got continuous lighting, you know, normal street lighting or just uh, lights fixed on, on buildings. We've got glare lighting or projection lighting where the, the light is specifically shining away from the building. It's not um, illuminating your building. It's making it more difficult for intruders to know what is happening close to the building because they're looking into bright lights there are plenty of shadowed areas which may have security guards cameras for all they know uh whatever um flood lighting for a large area of course trip lighting um those uh lighting systems that have actuators uh, activated by movement activated by infrared activated by a, a lot of things again 
you know, it's, it's sort of an alarm system uh, that the uh, sensor is sensing movement, heat, whatever it may be, and turning on a light. The light is the actuator. Um, so, uh, now standby lighting. Again, you know, do you have a situation where you have battery powered lights? Um, does the batter, does the power go out frequently? What do you do in terms of, of power going out? And, and what does the lack of power do to your security? Um, and, uh, I, we, um, in, in many areas here, in physical security, we have to stress the fact that maintenance is a part of this. Um, we tend to neglect maintenance in the information technology world because, of course, our computers last for long periods of time. They go obsolete before they break down. And so we have uh, situations where... Um, uh, we are not used to um, physical devices that need more maintenance. And standby lighting is definitely one of these. Having, uh, you know, the battery go bad on you. I can remember my uh, first um, uh, uninterruptible power supply. And uh, I lived in a relatively stable area. And, and the first time I actually needed the thing, uh, it failed on me because uh, the the battery um, had basically expired. It's just, you know, they do have a lifetime. You have to uh, replace them, uh, update them, whatever. Anyways, it was, you know. So, um, and, you know, this can lead to really nasty situations. Um, in 9-11, uh, the 9-11 situation, you know, 100,000 people, uh, trying to get out of the buildings, going down stairwells, you know, uh, up to 100 floors, uh, trying to reach the ground. And unfortunately, 90% of the emergency lighting in the building had failed. So most of the time, they were completely in the dark. That must have been rather terrifying. Um, so, you know, standby lighting again, you know, emergency lighting in in these situations. So we have a, a number of aspects to uh, address at the boundary in terms of different types of technology.